All right, folks, we are live. We're about three minutes into the pre-show, so this gives you time to go to your Facebook page or go to YouTube. Click on the link that's already there. It's on Peter's um, personal Facebook page. It's also on Jason's Facebook page, and it's on their Facebook community pages. So click the YouTube link, and you should be watching us now. We're live. We got about two minutes before we go live, top of the hour. So you can chat with us. Okay. Who has their YouTube up? Who had it up? So, it was me. <laughs> <laughs> That was me. That was me. It sounds, like, it sounds like you still got it on. No, I don't. <laughs> I shut that down. <laughs> so that's why we do a pre-show. We get it all the bugs worked out. We got one minute before we go live, folks. And this is the perfect time to get into YouTube. Turn it on. Oh, and get your glass of water just in case. You never know what happens. And, and get your 3D goggles. That's right. Get your goggles. And your, <laughs> and your, uh, your uh, superhero wristband. That's old school. <laughs> well, you know, but, but they're still useful as decoders of the things that we're saying. You know. Here's mine. See that? There it is. Pretty cool, huh? See, that thing's got some pow. Wonder Woman. Wonder Woman. Yeah, is it something like this? Wonder Woman. <laughs> Whatever she did back then. All right. Welcome everyone to the Modern Day Mystic Show, the MDM Show. Tonight we've got some. We've got a very, very special guest. We've got Alchemist Jason. Davis. Jason is here with us tonight, and we're going to talk about a lot of different topics. Hold on, folks. It's going to be an amazing ride. I'm going to let Jason, of course, introduce himself, but of course, tonight and every night, we've got Peter Shank, the modern day mystic. Peter is here. They're going to have just a wonderful conversation. What I want you to do is get your questions in YouTube. We're all watching this live in YouTube. Post your questions there so I'm not hunting and, and trying to find all of these questions all over the place. Just watch it directly in YouTube. You can ask your questions there, type them out. We'll see them there. All right, folks. Peter, I'm going to turn it over to you so you and Jason can get started. Hey, thanks, Donna. Um, for <laughs> I don't even know where to begin. It's already started. <laughs> it's already started. Me and uh, Jason have an 11-year history, um, really pushing the envelope with uh, products that uh, can really uh, stretch the imagination, push the env like the envelope of what's possible. Um, Jason is a very good friend of mine and a master alchemist and as a lot of you have heard me talk about him on the different shows and what we've done the alchemist is actually the alchemist and that really comes from personal integrity and I know a lot of people in this business and Jason is the one person at the highest level that is in his own integrity and tonight um, you're really going to see a lot of synergy between me and him. Um, if you've hung out with us on treasure hunting trips, star parties, or just in uh, Salt Lake, you'll kind of know our synergy and crazy things happen when we're together. But uh, <laughs> for, <laughs> but for those of you that don't know, um, you know it's uh, it's it's already building. You'll see. Over to you, yeah, man. It is. It's building. Oh, what do you want me to do? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Jason, start off with start off telling us about you, if you would. Oh well, let's see. How much of that bio do we cover? Um, I guess uh, you know to try and not shell it. It it it, it was interesting because you know I went through a phase in my early twenties where I had to be extremely pragmatic minded 
And so anything beyond, you know, what you can see and touch and all that sort of thing, uh, you know, was hogwash to me. And uh, I was walking through a bookstore one day, and I saw two books in the same day. One of them was Holy Blood, Holy Grail, and the other was Communion. And um, Communion's that famous, iconic uh, book that had a cover of a gray alien that became literally the, you know, the face of of the abduction experience and it was on the nonfiction shelf and uh, and I was just oh man what what's that doing there come on you know and uh, and you know I walked away all indignant and everything and then probably two weeks later I was standing right back in front of it looking into those eyes going I gotta have that book <laughs> and uh, I grabbed it and read it, and then sometime later wound up buying Holy Blood, Holy Grail, and both of those books almost at the same time just opened me to a whole different thing, and, uh, and you know, that was, I guess, 20 years ago, and here we are now. I mean, that's uh, kind of what it is, and so along the way, I, I got interested in uh, what was being called, um, you know, monatomic gold, or uh, later Ormus and all that, did some searches, Got in touch with some people, wound up using some of it, uh, wound up meeting a, an alchemist associate friend who turned me on to some things, and you know, I wound up playing with it by, by gathering water at the north end of the Great Salt Lake and uh, turning it into a pretty good alchemical product that I thought I was actually blowing. And so I... <coughs> excuse me, throughout batch after batch for several days. And I realized at about that moment, having used a really powerful rhodium and iridium product, that I had a group of beings standing around me. And, um, and I realized they were teachers. And they were there in that moment to tell me that I hadn't blown it, that I had actually just taken it to a whole different level. And, uh, and I thought, wow. And so I you know, put some in a bottle and took it to some friends and other people I met and you know I'd hand it to a woman at our office and she takes five drops of it and pretty soon she's looking at her hands as though she'd never even seen them before and um, and she said you've got to sell this stuff and so I wound up uh, you know founding the Zero Point Technologies which became ZPTech.net and I wound up selling that to a, a friend of mine because I needed to to leave an apparatus in place where people just beginning into the alchemy experience could go to him and those that were ready to go way beyond uh, what he offers could find me. And that's uh, when Blue Emerald Alchemy came about and that's, uh, that's basically the company that we develop and design all the new stuff in and, and uh, brand it and get it out there. That's kind of where you blew my hair back, right? Right around that time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, um, for you, those people that don't know our history, um, back in 2004, I was uh, just doing a search for some UFO stuff on the internet. I came across a book um, by Lawrence Gardner called "The The Secrets of the Law, Sacred Ark" or something like that, and uh, in it talked about the white powder of gold. And I did a Google search, and the second. Um, Google search that came up was Zero Point Technologies, and um, that was really the catalyst for uh, a complete 180 in my life at the time. Um, so I uh, ordered some Zenergy, I think it was, and it came in the mail, and for about three weeks I was using that and had a lot of energy. And then I, I stepped it up to the white powder of gold and then had my wake-up experience. And uh, Jason didn't have an ego back then, really. Um, I tried to call him three times a day. For three weeks, I need to return my phone calls, and then uh, one day he does decide to return my phone call, and I'm driving home, and he's like, uh, "Just, just pull over." So I pulled over, and he goes, "Do you know what ascended masters are?" And I was like, "Yeah, and no." <laughs> he goes, "Do you know who Saint Germain is?" And I said, "Yeah, no, but there's a, there's a, you know, a, a big uh, guy in, in the car seat next to me, and um, he's saying he's Saint Germain." And then um, he asked me one of the folklore mysteries of alchemy, who is his twin flame or uh, soulmate, and uh, Saint Germain showed me this, you know, red-haired, green-eyed, fiery beauty, 
and he called her Portia. And I was like, Jason, it's not, you know, is it's not a car named Portia, and that was kind of uh, the linchpin or the uh, the grounding for this uh, eleven year just insane ride from you know pushing the envelope with Jason in the early days of making um, you know amazing alchemies to uh, developing software, and you know the rest at this point is pretty much history. But uh, Jason has taken everything he's done. <laughs> To a to a level that uh, he's about to go into. Do you want to do an activation with water for everybody and kind of blow them away? Um. Well, it it could be awfully powerful. I mean, to the point where you would, might want to hang up and go lie down. Let's do it. Uh, I I think that it would be maybe better at the end of this. You know. If what does? If if we if we saved it for the end so that everybody could just go lie down and allow the integration to take place. Uh, let's just do a half power one. I really want to get these guys going. All right. Well, maybe we ought to do it for uh, just a little bit of uh, like tingling clarity, maybe. Actually, clarity is a good one. I I, right. would, I would put a disclaimer in there though. <laughs> Well, what we could do is just, you know, use your intuition. Use as, use as much or a little of, as little of the water as you're guided to because it, water. it's just every bit as powerful as, as you'll ever want it to be, depending on where you are. But, uh, yeah, sure, let's do it if everybody's got water. Hey, right. and while everyone is getting water, so this is the time you take to get water, and while they're doing that, Jason, Peter, can you, I know we've got some new folks in the chat with us tonight watching the show, so can you kind of really give us a feel for what an activation is and what it does for folks, one of you or both of you? You want me to take it, Peter? Yep. Um, well, you know, water is a, it's a liquid crystal, and so it's a, it's a uh, fantastic communicative mechanism, and uh, it's highly programmable, therefore, and, um, you know, there are truly a lot of, uh, of beings that are involved in everything that we're doing. And so, for instance, you know, for all intents and purposes, um, your water would be um, put into a liquid crystalline form, meaning if you put it under an electron microscope, you could see a uh, six-sided hexagonal snowflake-like you know, manifestation that's going to show its geometrical form, and that geometrical form is what carries the programming, and um, uh, and it's it's really actually very easy to do so long as you know you can do it, and um, and so anybody that's ready just has to say you know I accept, and uh, they themselves are doing the initiation and bringing the, the the energy right into them simply because I'm flowing it to whoever is accepting it. Awesome. And so, in this case, you know, we're just talking about it'll just bring a little bit of mental clarity. But I've, you know, I can already see that there's some other plans going on here, you know. And I think, and I think it was what Peter was talking about because this is, this is an activation that could actually go on from, you know, literally the rest of your life. I mean, you know, it's, for those of us that are like really slow, can you like sum that up in three words? Which one? It's three. Three words. <laughs> like the toilet paper, two words, but we'll give you three. Uh, sum, sum the whole thing up in three words. Uh, buckle your seatbelts. Oh, I like that. That's a, that's a compound word at the end. So oh, I, you're right. You're right. <laughs> so I cheated. Uh, Peter. What? You make it four words. <laughs> all right, four words. Yeah, all right. <laughs> then, then I've already said it. Is it is it buckle your seat belts? Yeah, that, okay, there we go. Yeah, all right, let's rock it, man. Let's do it. Buckle up, folks. Yeah, 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 how can you tell if everybody's ready? Uh, you got to just guess. Folks, you're ready. Let's do this. Well, certainly, you know, I mean, the way that it'll work is anybody doing it, even off of the recording, is going to get the same um, energy. So, uh, everybody out there with your water, cup your hands around it without touching the container. <laughs> what happens if you have a 55-gallon drum? Well, just, just, you know, just make it look like you're praying over it. <laughs> and, all right. Got my water. 
think or say I accept. And here it comes. That was uh, that was pretty interesting. You remember um, that one time you held up that uh, I, I don't remember what it was. I think it was a piece of metal, and um, I described the the cone shaped swirling that started happening in it. Those? Yeah. Okay. That same thing just happened to you. You just became the zero point for about ten seconds. That was really cool. <laughs> right on. That was very cool. It's uh, so it's cool to hear the visual of it. Absolutely. Uh, are there any questions out there from people? Not yet. Not yet. I think people are probably taking in that water and that whole um, activation. Oh. So for me, I you know what? It felt right in here is where I felt something. It was like a little bit tight right in there. Kind of, I don't know. What is that, Peter or, or Jason? Where did you feel it again? Right here. That's your throat chakra. Yeah, and there's also something there also that, um, you know, it's, it's right here. And it's not really very well known at all. In fact, it's one of the great secrets. And it's like having an internal galaxy. And I'll bet you Peter can um, actually give some detail to this. Um, but it's the location of the true voice. Oh, right here? Right there. It's, it's just, you know, almost exactly between the heart center and the throat. Uh, hollow, right? And um, and when you connect to that, when you um, do any kind of you know energy like work, and then use your voice from there, it's mm. exquisitely powerful. And uh, I can see it kind of activated that in you. Can can you see what that center looks like, Peter? Or is it just like an enormous vortex? Uh, it's actually um, it's kind of like a galaxy. Yeah. Exactly. You ever see the Men in Black? You remember the galaxy on the uh, Orion on the on the cats, um, whatever. Yeah. Same thing. yeah. That also hooks up to a place that's in in the throat that involves the hyoid bone that not very very many people know about. In fact, almost nobody. Um, but we might get to that sometime later because we're talking some pretty highly esoteric stuff there. Bring it on. So talk about what you're doing with the super beings. Yes. Inquiring minds want to know. I do. Well, let's see how to put that in a quick and simple way. Um, you know, it, it requires, to, to really grok it, it requires a ton of background information, mainly because you really have to understand what's really going on on Earth, and not very many people do. Uh, and it's um, and so it's hard to make all of that make sense without going through all that, and that's quite a story in and of itself. So let's see. Um, I, 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 can, I can put it really simply this way. Um, what's going on is the creation of, new, of, a, of a whole new world. And it isn't just changing this one, it's the creation of a new one. And the way that you do that um, in, you know, how we're being shown to do what we're doing on a global level project that is going to become very big and very powerful, Peter can tell you that, super beings is going to be incredible. And... Um, the way that you do that, this is obviously way oversimplified, is that you would take a fifth density realm and merge it with Earth as a third density realm, and the product of those two is the new world. And so the super beings is, you know, in other words, it always takes more than one thing to make a new thing, generally two, and so, you know, that has um, correspondence with the male and female and all that kind of thing. Uh, or thesis antithesis creates the synthesis. That's a, that kind of thing, and um, and so to to merge those two, you actually have to set out to be uh, to bilocate your awareness in order to be conscious in both. 
and I mean completely conscious, so that you're not phasing out of your waking self in order to be conscious elsewhere, you're simultaneously aware. And, um, and so we've opened that up, we've, we've developed the pr protocols, the world that we're working with has its own security measures, uh, you know, we're, we're actually meeting with people on it. We're sort of ambassadors, that kind of thing. And so all we have to do is grow the number of people simultaneously aware in both of those worlds. And, uh, and the result is ultimately the birth of a new world. So that's the simplest way I can think of to put it. I hope that was simple enough. And how are you, how are you um, pushing it out there? How are you reaching people with it? Uh, since I just really finished almost that entire, uh, you know, area of the website um, today, uh, you know, I mean, I literally stopped working on it to, to get with you guys. Um, so we've got somebody, you know, who's uh, sort of a social media maven, a girl in, in Australia that, that just wants to take it and run with it and, uh, and you know, uh, be doing some of the kinds of stuff you're doing, and you know. So, I'm a beginner. I stumble across the Super Beings website. What's the experience I can expect? Um, if you belong there, you will instantly start to feel the energy, and um, if you begin to read the the information necessary to understand. Uh, everything we're doing because it is pretty, you know, spiritually sophisticated stuff. Way high level, highest level, really, on the planet. And um, you know, you'd begin, you'd get into some of that reading, and it's going to flip your polarities, and it's going to disabuse you of a lot of the, you know, sort of modern New Age beliefs, and and uh, and you're going to find out, you know, unless you already know it, you find out a lot of stuff that's going to kind of blow your mind and, you know, and, and the truth of what's really going on and all that. Uh, and uh, it's always, as you know, no matter of what you're attracted to the, and using your intuition and trusting your intuition to move forward. And, and, uh, and so there are several levels to participate there. For instance, you can just sort of get your toes wet and, and, you know, mess around in the forums and get in on the conferences and things like that, or you can get a little bit deeper by using some of the alchemies there, which are truly stunning. Um, I was going to have you look at one, Peter, uh, when I got the chance, but, you know, I can kind of hook you up with it right now. It was a, a combination of all seven of those, uh, you know, those solar ray level alchemies, meaning the whole platinum group and gold. So look at the combo and see what you get. Uh, it just really centers on your third eye again and starts uh, another zero point or a black hole. Very interesting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and it's using the energy of the sun to do that. And so, you know, if, they're, if they want to get, you know, wet up to their waist, they can, um, you know, get into the alchemy. And then if they want the full dive in, you know, they get into our awareness bilocation training, uh, which is free right now. And uh, and get going in that, and that is the full dive directly into the rabbit hole. <laughs> so it's all, it's all experience, you know. We don't really tell people anything. We we make it all be about experience. So the level that you're playing on now, compared to let's say Icarus or Prometheus alchemies that we developed, I don't know, whenever 2005. Um, you know, linear on a linear line, where are we? How far ahead are, of that bell curve have you come? What can people expect? Um, back when those alchemies were coming about, um, my consciousness was that of a, I, I hadn't even reached the fetus stage compared to what I am now. I've learned more in the past two months than I did in the previous 20 years. Really? Yeah. <laughs> what have you learned? It, it, all of the stuff you cannot explain. You know what I mean? But I, there are certain parts of it that you can, you know, and it's, and they all have to do with mastery, you know what I mean? They like, I hesitate to say ascended masters anymore because they themselves think that's a ridiculous title. Um, but, it, and so it's mastery, and mastery is just a reference to, you know, mastery of a space-time continuum like this one, right? Okay, because so 
So stop right there for a second. Do you remember when we were um, <clears throat> trying to manifest gold? And um, you know, I read that uh, that book about um, how the universe is the yeah. thinking stuff. So the, the the school of thought back then was, you know, um, we came out with a paragraph that was very high vibration. I don't remember what it said, and you know, it was all about bringing something in the form. And we discovered that. The only thing that is the same in the universe compared to all the other multiverses was matter, the, the, the weight or the density of matter. So we had to give something to the other universe to get back gold, and we were playing with salt um, at the time, right? And, I mean, that stuff was, was, you know, was amazing what we were learning. So what I'm trying to get a feel for is where your head is now compared to then. I mean, it's easy to say, that, okay, I've learned more in the last two months than I did in the last 20 years, but, you know, I'm I, I'm having a problem wrapping my brain around it, and, you know, I normally get this stuff pretty quickly. Right. Well, and, and you know, I mean, stop me if it's if you think that it's getting too technical or, or however you want to put it, but, you know, you'll understand what I'm about to say. It's, you know... It, it, it's like the, the very basis of what you, of, of how you look at it is that, well, you know that there are people all over the world in shamanic um, traditions that can perform miracle level stuff, right? And, you know, in the super beings, I use Jesus a lot because, uh, you know, he was trained for seven years at, uh, on a, you know, in the Qumran community by the Dead Sea. And so, um, he became a high-level practitioner of those arts, right? And um, and so the first sentence that has to be understood is that is that those miracles are not actually possible on our level, on meaning the third density Earth plane, right? And the reason for that is because the third density Earth plane wasn't designed for it. Are you talking about the observer or the observee? I'm talking about the abilities themselves, supernormal abilities, cannot be done on the third density earth plane. Um, they have to be done by somebody who knows how to open a portal and merge a, an isolated incident um, location with uh, a um, level of being where those things are possible. So, so how is it possible that someone that doesn't vibrate at that level will actually observe what's going on? You mean if somebody were watching a so, super normal? Uh, uh, depending on your belief system, Jesus turned water into wine, walked on water, and um, made bread out of something. So, a lot of people experience that apparently, right? Right. So, if he's doing it from a fifth dimensional experience, but in a third dimensional reality, how come the observer that's not awake or the walking dead observe that? Um, it's a great question. I'll, I'll explain it the best I can according to, the, to this language. And how that works is this. Um, maybe you remember, I, I, I know we, you and I talked about it. It was in the holographic universe. And it was a great example because it was the story of a, of a, I think, like a 12-year-old girl that was at a dinner party with her parents, and there was a hypnotist there, and he hypnotized her. And um, somewhere during this, the session, the hypnotist said uh, to her dad, remove your watch, hang it behind your back, and uh, with the watch face facing forward, and hang it on your finger." And he did that, and then he said to his own daughter, you know, the, the, the dude's daughter, um, now your dad is invisible. Would you please tell us what time it is? And she leaned forward, looked right through her body, his body, and saw the watch face. And, um, and he said, what time is it? And she told him. And so when they... Um, brought her out of hypnosis, they asked what she, what she had seen, and what she had seen is a watch hanging in open space. And so, um, if, you know, you know how 
it's always been about saying that the world is is an illusion and you have to see through it and all that. It's more like saying that it's a hallucination. And so if you, for instance, had, let's say, said to that girl while she was in that completely non-conscious state, now make your dad invisible for the rest of us, right? So that they now get in on uh, a hallucination being projected by her, right? And so, you know, the, the abilities of Jesus, an example, you know, all he was really doing was making his own hallucination visible by everybody else. All right, stop right there for a second. So in the pre-show, prior to the pre-show, I had mentioned the first conversation that we ever had, well, the second conversation we ever had on the phone. And after about 45 minutes, my head was going to explode. Okay, I wonder, <laughs> I wonder how many people on the call right now are just going through that. <laughs> well, you know, it's, I mean, it would be great to have some input, you know, on the, the YouTube uh, comments or something because, I, you know, I'd like to know. I'd like to talk about whatever everybody, everybody else wants to talk about. Inquiring yeah, minds want to know. I don't really need to talk about this. I just know that that you know I can give examples and I can exa actually you know uh, help everybody get into the type of meditative state that eventually leads to what you would call second awareness. Okay. Now, see, you, you know what's really, really cool right now? What was the last time I was out there visiting you? 2011, maybe. Yeah, yeah, probably. Okay, so what's happening right now is there's there's warps coming out of your body and they're spreading. I've never seen that before with you. That is mind blowing. <laughs> That's funny. Well, the yeah. Is, can you feel them? Pardon me. I said, can you feel them? Are you talking to me? Yes. Can you feel uh, what he's seeing? Let me see. Yeah, yeah, it's a pulsation. And, uh, and, you know, it only makes sense. I, I mean, you know, there, there would be a lot of beings. There, I mean, how many are around me right now, Peter? 20? Uh, there's a lot. <laughs> you know, and there's, and, you know, they're just here to pull stuff out to everybody. I mean, that's that's really what's going on. It almost doesn't even matter what we talk about. If you want to, you know, switch to, uh, you know, Captain Crunch or something like that, or, you know, some, some uh, you know, Cereal recipes, <laughs> you know, it's gonna have the same effect. You know, it was, it was interesting. Um, on the show last week or the week before, um, and, I, and I'm just going back in time to make a reference point with you and kind of the synergy that we used to use um, to extract information. And um, you know, when 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 I first woke up, I was very ungrounded, completely unbalanced, and half out of my skull. And uh, Jason very much grounded me, and we developed a system of uh, a Q and A system, a question and answering system, to really discern and extrapolate some really cool information about what we were doing. And a lot of that would just come from me babbling about whatever, and there there would be this moment of clarity where something would come out of my mouth and just make absolute sense. And it was interesting because. David picked up on that. Um, I don't know, there was a show two weeks ago. I said, rewrite your future. And he's just, he's just completely running with it right now. It was, like, it was like that moment when we were out in the desert, and I said, we're digging the gold out the same time it went in. It was like one of those, oh, my God moments, you know what I mean? Well, that one, you know, that one's worth talking about because it wasn't put that way. It was... It was um, Let's see, how was that put? Because the, the question was whether or not we needed to, to ascertain when the gold was put in the ground. Remember, like it could have been Spanish gold or, you know, what year or whatever. And then St. Germain just sort of boomed out of you and just said, um, the gold appeared when your shovel got to it. That was, that was the gist of what was being said. Wow. And even, you know, on third density levels of being, that happens to be true. You know, you, you can't escape the quantum effect. Well, you remember the ho-ho uh, trick that we did, right, on the way to that three-day dig? So, Donna, I bought a, uh, a twin pack of Hostess cupcakes, right? And we were out 
in this area near Eureka in Utah, I think south of it somewhere. Okay. And um, there was a we were just led and to this place, and um, there was a lot of animal scat all over the place and the ants and whatnot. And um, that's when Calvin had that uh, ground penetrating radar, right? Exactly. So I put this cupcake on the floor of the desert, and we, <laughs> for three days nothing touched it. Three days. It was yeah. unbelievable. You remember that? It was either magical or the animals just know, you know, <laughs> what not to touch. <laughs> Maybe the people need to know that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's like, you know, if you can't get a coyote to touch a ho ho, you probably ought to stay away from it. We we had this uh, friend of ours, the friend of Jason's, um, Calvin, who's uh, very much a tinkerer, and he builds all these crazy machines and stuff. And um, I scratched this um, symbol on the desert floor. Uh, I think we called it Trilon or something. Yeah. Right. And, um, and then we roped off this um, 10, 10 by 10 foot area, and he had this machine on his back and he'd have a laptop on his chest and something that looked like a vacuum cleaner and it was a kind of like a ground penetrating radar and he would walk this this 10 by 10 um, area and, and, and map it and then I don't know what we did maybe I, I forget what we did around that area but he went back an hour later and remapped it with the same machine it, and wasn't, even, it wasn't even an hour and um, you know, we were just standing there, and you said you were sitting off to the side. I was standing right on top of the location, and you said, "Okay, just um, allow the gold from the whole area to gather and materialize right below your feet." And so I started that work. Five minutes later, he runs over it, and the ground had a whole different character. It was starting to become more agglomerated. Yeah, that was uh, that was. Uh, <laughs> oh my. Besides the Twinkie, that was a that was an excellent adventure. He was pretty blown away himself, and he's an out there guy. But he was going over there, going, "How did you do that?" Remember that? Yeah, that was uh, that was just one of uh, many of the early crazy adventures. So, anyways, I didn't mean to interrupt you. Getting back to third and fifth dimensional matter, and looking at from a third dimensional mind that's not awake. Well, you know, it's like, uh, the, I mean, the, the place that it all starts is in density. It's not, you know, it, we're in third density. It's not the third dimension. It's the third density. And, and and it's easy to give a visualization to that if you, for instance, understand that there are infinite number of dimensions on the third density level, right? Mm. And so same with fourth density, same with fifth density. So that's what we start with right there. We're in a density and not a dimension. We're in one dimension on the third density. And, um, and so, you know, the, the large sort of the, – the large-scale belief that what was going to be happening in uh, – December of 2012 was this mass ascension to the to the fifth dimension and all that and it was always a fairy tale because you know you have to know how you're going to do that. FYI, you just shocked a lot of people by saying that. <laughs> well, you know what you did because um, we've got a question out there and someone wants to know. Hey, Jason, it's Z. Um, and they're saying, how do you stay grounded with all this high energy vibes coming in? It was that Z Zurab? Yeah. yeah the cool. magic of Mount Shasta. Yeah. And he's probably riding from um, uh, a villa somewhere high in the Alps. <laughs> Switzerland, um, to be exact, probably. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. You, well, you know, it's a good question, Z, and, and I think you probably know the general answer. It's kind of how I'm built. You know, I'm just as dense as a stone, and uh, therefore I'm just automatically grounded. And, uh, but, you know, sometimes I've got to, to deal with that energy like anybody else, and then it's just a matter of getting grounded. And what's the best way you ground? I like back, standing back against a tree. Mm. I thought you liked vodka. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, if it grows on trees, then sure. <laughs> 
So standing up against the tree. This yeah, tree back against the tree. Yeah, make sure your lower back and your upper back are touching the tree, and then just uh, and then just that's the tree to get you grounded. And it will also take energies in there that you don't want or need and put them right into the grid so that it can be dealt with by beings that know what they're doing. So Jason, are we needing, as, as folks, are we needing to ground ourselves more? Are we like not spending enough time in nature or whatever it is so that we can stay grounded? Uh, you know, I think everybody, myself included, could use much more uh, time in nature and uh, communing in that way because, you know, you're out of the, the psychic noise to begin with. And, and, you know, in nature, if you're in the mountains, for instance, there's a lot of precious metals in them that they transmit energy. It's a, you know, if you happen to be walking over the top of a gold pocket, and Peter's very good at this, by the way, he can sense when it's under you. Um, you know, I mean, one of the ways that they find gold is by, by using ozone detectors. And so, you know, if you've got a deposit of gold 50 feet below the ground that is producing ozone that you can detect on the surface, you know that it is producing an energy that you can just stand there and absorb. That's mm. a ref refined gold. Mm. What does that do for us when we, when we find a gold pocket, we're standing on it, that energy that we're absorbing? Because you have a product for gold. What, what does that do? Well, the energy, for instance, if you were in the mountains, where it's really just chi, right? And so you take chi in wherever you take chi in. Usually, it's going to be either through the crown chakra or through that that center at the back of the head, just sort of behind the crown chakra. Um, and that's a very powerful center. That's where you know Hindu thought has prana entering as an example. And so, if you just stood there in that field being produced by the gold and just breathed and, and visualized the energy entering your crown, you're going to, you know, basically be topping up your surcharge of usable energy. Awesome. Does that make sense? And so um, it just so happens that the alchemical products, when you get these types of, uh, you know, the noble metals to a state where they're ingestible, they basically turn you into a mechanism um, wired with copper to fiber optics, and it takes a few months to do it, but you're flowing, you know, a thousand times. Not quite. <laughs> it takes a few seconds to do it, actually. <laughs> right. But... But you know what I mean by that. It's, it takes a while for your body to catch up with what your spirit body has done. You know what I'm mm. saying? Okay. So could we talk just a little bit about some of your products? Sure. The alchemy? Because I, I know folks got to have some questions about that. Do you have any samples there with you or no? Yeah. Jason's got the most awesome high tech lab you've ever seen. Yeah, it's like, there's one. That's a gold. Tell us about it. Don helped to design it. Um, well, you know, over the course of a, a lot of times, you know, I mean, it's like I, I don't have Peter's ability, and uh, I, I see things in my own way, and it's usually about feeling an idea and and so I know when I get an idea that is just sort of almost not like my own that has been given to me, and then, and then I'll go start working on it alchemically. And, um, and this is just a goal that uh, we're finally able to basically punch it through, if you will, to a, an upper harmonic of being. And, and it's like, you know, if you look at the rainbow – and then uh, and you say you go to the top of it and give it a dividing point and then put another rainbow on top of it, it's just another octave up, right? And this gold has um, a portion of its being on that upper octave. And so when you use it, it connects you to that upper octave in yourself because you, you also have being there. You're just not conscious of it. So does it raise our vibration when we ingest this gold? Oh, yeah. Okay. Yep. 
the, the, the light body is instantly resonates at the level of the vibration, but the physical body generally takes 72 hours, I think, somewhere around there to kind of raise itself. And then, right. you know, in that time, the detox can happen and, and um, you know, sometimes that can be unpleasant. But when you come through on the other side, you're amazing. Yeah. Anything people should expect for de you know while detoxing? Oh, uh, you know they're they're usually mild. I mean, it's if you know if you've been through some of those major adjustments with your own frequencies, and I'm sure you have, where it can almost be like a uh, a flu. If it's there, you're kind of like, oh, thank God, I'm changing again, you know, um, and uh, and so that that's usually what it is, just sort of mild flu um, like symptoms if they're even experienced, because a lot of people don't. So, where's the future of all this going in your head? Yes. Not that time exists or anything, but you know what I mean. Well, you know, the, um, I mean, you know, once again, it's to, to, to find out what's really going on on Earth is a huge thing to do, because there's just not very many people out there that know, and uh, and there are certainly very few websites that talk about it, if any at all. I can't find any. And uh, that's kind of where it starts. So you sort of have to understand what's really going on. And that could probably be put in a nutshell by saying that, that you, well, you, you know this, Peter. Remember when we used to look at uh, all those high-level beings who were nevertheless at war? The gang? Yeah. 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 You know, the, there is war all the way into the fifth density. I mean, you know, they the, the war there. And, um, and so we're, t you know, and our galaxy is, is sort of a human galaxy. Um, you know, I call them human esques. And so humans have been around, you know, for going on a couple hundred million years. And, um, and so some of the, let's say, you know, engineers, it's like when, whenever a new species comes along, it just doesn't happen in a vacuum. It happens to be beings who are, uh, you know, DNA, you know, they're geneticists, and, and they create new species. And that's exactly how the present human form was created. And, uh, and, and it made that switch from Neanderthal to Homo sapien, as you know, in almost the twinkling of an eye, even though the twinkling of an eye could be like said to be a couple of months in some place, or I mean generations in some places, right? Um, it was a very fast switch, right? And so that was due in part to the fact that the solar system was moving into a higher energy zone in galactic space, in its orbit around the galactic center. And, and so, to put it another way, it's an absolutely forced evolution, right? Because you either, you know, get with the energies that are, you know, in galactic space, or you, you know, die off, like how all evolution works. And so, where this is going is actually the birthing of a brand new species. Um, and, you know, all of us are, in effect, working on that right now, even if we don't know it. And, uh, and that's where it's going. And Are you in agreement that a shift's going to happen at some point? Oh, I, uh, we're going to cause it. How, how, do we, how Can we speed it up? Are we on, where are we with that shift? Um, well, you know, it's like uh, if, if we had... Um, let's say eight to ten thousand users of our awareness by location system right now would cause it in two years. Okay. And what's that going to look like when it happens to the person that's the Walking Dead? Ooh. Well, <laughs> you know, I mean, they're all going to have screen memories anyway. I mean, they, you know, we the, we're here to help third density evolutioners get to fourth density and then we're done and that's really all there is to it and um, and so uh, to them it's just going to be a screen memory in other words let's say that you know you're asking me to answer questions that you don't want answered or at least 
you know, we got to get so friggin' technical to, to answer it, but it's like, you, you remember all of those conversations we had about how we created Atlantis and then destroyed it, right? Yeah. And so it came into being in the twinkling of an eye because it was an already existent continuum, right? And so it's it's a very similar situation where, where for instance, if some third-density evolutioner uh, passes away right now, and I don't know if you know this, but there are no third density people being born right now at all. Do you know that? No. They're all they're all fifth density or above, so that we can get this job done. Mm, and, that makes sense. And the indigo children and the generations that came after it. Exactly. Um, and everybody on this call is from the fifth, sixth, or even seventh density. And so. Once all of the third density evolutioners who are using their perceptions to hold all this in form are gone, then our job is going to be quite easy to create a new world. See what I'm saying? Because they're the ones holding it in form. We're not. And, and so um, if they pass away through the normal processes of you know what's mistakenly called death, um, they are being held in sort of uh, uh, almost, you know, like saying fourth density incubation chambers, and a lot of them really are just kind of hanging out and getting spiritually cleansed and and that kind of stuff, and some of those, uh, you know, astral facilities and all that. And then when the um, um, the new continuum is essentially completely ready for the embodiment of a new species, then the, they'll just start incarnating into it, and it'll just be the world. For them, see what I'm saying? And the Earth experience will not even be a member. So how do people become angels? Oh, by, you know, clicking little app buttons. <laughs> like, Let's have some more fun, man. Let's do another activation. Let's crank it up this time. Way up. Are you sure you okay, want to and, and before you do that... You, you've got some folks saying hi to you. So Arlene um, says, hi, guys. Glad to be here. So if you guys give a shout-out to Arlene, that'd be great. What's up, Arlene? Is that Arlene hey, from Arlene. New Jersey? It'd be Arlene Carbora, if I'm not mistaken. You are correct. <laughs> I remember drinking tequila with her out, <laughs> out, <laughs> out the base of the UNAs. Wait. Our light bodies can't accept that. What are you, what are you talking about? We don't do that. <laughs> Well, this was before we became advanced. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, guys, I got another question before I do an activation. It says, if we're interested in using Jason's products, how do we know where to start or whether to start with something from his former company, ZTech? Can I answer that? Yes. Can you answer that one, Jason? Yeah. In my opinion, you search his website, and the product that screams your name is the one you want. Yeah, that's that's going to be generally true. And if you don't get a screamer, you uh, you start right at the beginning because even the beginning alchemy is way powerful. And uh, nothing at zero point technologies is uh, you know uh, going to get you there. It's not going to really get you started. Um, and so you know you're probably uh, going to just want to go to the superbeings.net and click on alchemy and go look around there. Right. You got to do it after the show because if I know folks, I need you to not multitask <laughs> and lose the show. Stay with us because you're going to miss something and you're going to be upset. Nice job, Donna. You're such a good host. <laughs> and she's mine. You're not stealing her from me. <laughs> yeah, <Go ahead>. <laughs> She's her own woman. She can make her own show. <laughs> <laughs> so... Okay, I have a question because um, kind of along the lines of um, starting, I, I, Peter, I like what you said, kind of what screamed at you. I went and ordered, um, Gold was screaming at me, and I'm not really quite sure why, but I kind of felt really pulled to the, um, the two products together, um, Jason. The Gold, and is it Palladium or Platinum? It's platinum. Those were, that scream to me. That's that's a good entry level way. It's very up there, but it but it but it's uh, a capacity to adjust itself according to the user is marvelous, 
and uh, and so you know it's one I, I still use it after a year uh, you know every day um, and I, I just like to spray it over the top of my head and stuff because it, it actually falls down and gets on your fields and mm -hmm. it, you get a quicker uh, clarifying effect from doing that than from ingestion so it's, it's amazing Ooh, I'm excited. I can't wait I'm to get hit myself right now. As a matter of fact, watch this, Peter. <laughs> I want some. I want some. It's like pixie dust. <laughs> okay, here's one. Here's another question. What's the difference between the um, and Peter? You might take this one. The the powder and the liquid. Um, in my experience. The liquid is far more powerful than its symbiotic twin, the powder, depending on what product you're getting. Um, you know, you also have to remember um, the stuff that woke me up isn't even in the same building as what he's creating today. You know, this is 10 years ago, 11 years ago. Um, so the stuff that he's creating today is a, an ultra high vibe. And, um, you know, just <laughs> use your own intuition. Um, when you're using these these products because they are um, extremely potent, extremely potent. Yeah, you know, and there's uh, I could add a little bit to that. You know how uh, you, everybody fits into one of the um, you know elemental signs, like you're a fire sign or a water sign or both. You know, water. things like that. Uh, yeah, exactly. I'm an earth sign. Um, the whether dry or liquid is almost how you're built. And, and so your intuition is like everything's about intuition. Trust it and go with your intuition. But, but that's what's going to determine it for you is, is actually how you're built. When I woke up, I was just, you know, I was built to just like that. And it just happened. Other people, it takes years, months, um, I guess whatever your own path is going to be. But, uh, um, you know, I, I followed... Jason worked with him for years, and you know here we are today. So it's a it's a whole different world. And we were just commenting on that uh, an hour ago, and the it's, the products are amazing, amazing. And yeah, once now, yeah, now, now that some of these latest are finished, I need to get them to you because you, you you haven't had the latest. <laughs> How many times have I told you, man? I just want to go back to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> and never not know. I just go back to sleep. <laughs> You well, can never not know. <laughs> there was a there was an interesting conversation that me and Jason had for about two months. This was uh, very early on in my wake up experience. I had um, two golden bulls uh, following me around with rings in her nose, and uh, every time I talked to him about it, I got this really weird vibe. I was like, man, is he is he getting what I'm talking about? And he goes to me one day, he goes, why would bulls, B-O-W-L-S, be following you around? And it was bulls, B-U-L-L-S. Yeah, we're, like, like, we're out of Mount Zion, and you said the bulls are up there. And I said, why would there be bulls up on Mount Zion? And so we've been, you know, literally two months. Uh, with me thinking we were talking about bowls, like you put, you know, cereal in, you know. <laughs> and he said, no, they're bowls, you dummy. They got a ring through their nose, you know. And I was, <laughs> yeah. Well, that's, I'm glad to have yeah. well, had that, you know, bit shared with me uh, at long last. There was, a, there was another uh, one that was pretty mind-blowing. We were at... Um, the Mormon Center in Salt Lake City, the uh, I guess the the church, yeah. and um, we we did a, a tour with a couple elderly women, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> you want to tell this one? <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, I can, I can, yeah, I think it'd be good if I just tell a little bit of it from my perspective, and then you can <laughs> share the much larger perspective. Um, the uh, you know, one of them wanted to take us on a tour, and we were just, she was a nice lady. She had a decent vibe going on, and uh, and so we started the tour, and she, um, it became, started to get clear even to me that, that she was struggling almost to keep the, uh, to, almost like to keep from shape-shifting, and so it was clear something was looking out through her eyes at us, and that she was just sort of a monitor that didn't even know what was going on. And... 
another woman joined us, and I know what she came over to do. To do. She was all about trying to better handle the energy that Peter and I were. And so she just glued herself to us and walked around, and she was having even more trouble uh, hiding what was within. And, uh, and it was just kind of a blast because we were there doing a lot of just energy clearing work anyway. And so um, it might be fun to mention that we started at breakfast. And I went down to the restroom and came back and sat down, and Peter said, you know who's here? And I said, no. And he said, well, it's kind of a gargoyle Satan-like guy. And, and I said, what does he want? And he said, I don't think he wants us going over to the temple grounds. And I said, well, let's go. <laughs> 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 and, uh, and so Peter can take it from there. I know that we were confronted with a lot so, of so deep, deep. I think the tour lasted about a half hour or so, and um, when we uh, got out of there, I looked at him, and he looked at me, and he's like, no. I was like, yeah. And, you know, I, I caught this woman at least three times, and her eyes just turned to lizard slits. And, you know, I was like, no, that's not happening. He's like, yeah, yeah, it did. So it's, uh, you know, just mind-blowing what's actually going on in the world. I mean, w once you see it from a higher perspective, it becomes really almost like a comic book. You know, everything is, uh, it's a cartoon. And, uh, and it is the busiest thing you can imagine. It is absolutely so stuffed with beings, it's un unbelievable. Yeah. Um, uh, there's, there's so much stuff I want to share with people with what we did. I mean, it, you know... <laughs> <laughs> I have a question. Out. Sure. And um, it's like I'm dying to ask this question. Um, when you two, especially, are out in the world, um, Peter, you know, I, I want to know your experience. Jason, want to know your experience. When you're just kind of out there every day, what are you seeing with people? There, are there certain people that you walk by that you just pick up on their energy and you're like, well, or are you drawn to people when you're out? When you know, when you're out just doing everyday things. What is? How does? What, how does that work for you two? Go ahead, Peter. Um, can I bring up the Boston billiards incident, or is that R-rated? <laughs> <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Let me ask you. Like don't I said, I'm naked before deity here, so you know you can you can uh, you know do whatever you want. I'll leave that one for private conversation. Um, <laughs> Okay, tell me. <laughs> <laughs> um, you, you know, it, it's it, it's different wherever you go. Um, I pick up on vibes all the time. Um, I see stuff constantly, never stops, can't turn it off. But what I've learned over the years of working with Jason and other things is they'll they won't bother you until you put your attention on them. Now that can be that can be energies in non physical form. It can be energy in a person as well, um, whether they're conscious or unconscious about it, but you get to a point where you can consciously direct your will into a person pretty easily. Uh, as long as it's of the light, um, you know, and, 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 and really just get what you want or move the conversation this way. A lot of it has to do with uh, facial movements, um, you know, in my experience, it was uh, it was interesting in the beginning. I think it was more powerful back then. Uh, today, I, I just don't really pay attention to it anymore because I need to stay uh, pretty grounded um, in the work that I'm currently doing. Um, but you, it's something you never turn off. I mean, you know, you know, close your eyes for a second, Donna. I'll show you something interesting. Okay. Tell me what's behind you. What's behind me? Close your eyes. Relax. Okay. Okay. Just relax. It'll come. Do you feel it now? Yeah. <laughs> okay. That's me consciously directing an entity that's behind you that just put its hands through you into your heart opening. It just started warming up your heart. 
Okay, that's how that's the playing field that we now operate on. It's as easy as uh, you know, giving a taking a lollipop from a child. There's no more discernment as long as it's um, you know done with good intent. There's right. no problem with it. Jason, your perspective on that? Um, that means put the phone down or you might lose it again. <laughs> you know, I've, uh, I've been at this game a long time, and I've awakened a lot of people. And among those uh, people, uh, uh, many of them, you know, the, the the shocking truth, and you know what I mean. It's, it's, it's what enlightenment really is. You experienced it yourself and went and did that. And... Um, and you know what? What you find out when you become enlightened is that you're actually uh, not alive. Is a good way to put it. That's a and, that's a word that I don't like. Enlightened. Yeah. Well, you know, it's the only one that has as broad a currency as necessary for people to understand what we're talking about. Um, and um, and you know, not very many people were able to experience that. But some, you know, just it scared them too bad. Uh, it, it scared them way too bad, and they, you know, reverted right back into literally a sort of really dense third density way of being, um, you know, and didn't really ever want to hear from me again. You know, there was one guy that that he just didn't want to hear from me ever again after I showed him, and and so. I walk around seeing literally, you know, among the, the human potential movement and, the, and, you know, the New Age movement that there's still a gigantic problem with people being still asleep and just not knowing it. And, and that's to say nothing of the third density evolutioners that were here to help move on, right? But, you know, they'll, you know, they, they'll never even begin to understand what we're talking about until they reach, you know, almost the... Um, the fifth density level of their own evolutionary path. And so we can't even try to make them understand. We can just sort of, you know, help them along in that way. And so it's as as it always is for me, it's that I'm just looking at, at almost everybody there as being asleep. And, um, and there isn't anything I can do about it, nor would I even try. But... Uh, but because of that, for me as an example, everything on the planet has become hilarious, and it doesn't matter what it is, because the truth is, is it's not really happening. <laughs> <You know? Ooh. laughs> okay, well, you know what? I have to say that when Peter, when you did that, I felt the back, I felt that. Like yeah. I said... I, I could feel something behind me. It's easy to manipulate the cartoon. I mean, it's all, it all, it, it, you know, Jason might have a different opinion on this, but, um, you know, m manipulating the cartoon just gets easier. The more that you wake up and you understand that everything around you is bullshit, uh, it's not real, uh, the easier it is to manipulate it. Well, you have to understand it as the digital nature that it is. I mean, then, then all you have to do is you be the thing. But, but it is an example. I, let's, just, let's just pick this up right where you left off. Um, when Peter focused behind you, Donna, um, that didn't happen in a vacuum either. In other words, there was an entity there that he created to do that. Right? And if... Peter closed his eyes and focused on that entity for, let's say, an hour. It would begin taking on a denser and denser form, and there could come a moment where you could turn around and see it. Wow. Okay. You look a little scared right now, Donna. Don't worry, we're not going to scare you away. <laughs> so, you know what? I have to say, I have to say, I don't, I don't feel actually. I. I, there was an overwhelming feeling, and I, I could, I don't know if anyone could tell, but I was like, okay, I'm, I'm going to keep it together, keep it together, keep it together, <laughs> because I, I could feel, like, my eyes kind of watering up, and I'm like, okay. That's but I could, conscious, I could feel that. That is conscious direction of energy. That's all it is. And, and you can manipulate it any way you want. And like Jason said, uh, maybe an hour. Um, Clearly, he has a little bit quicker than that, but 
Well, you know what I mean. Um, like if you you um, know if you look at a shaman in in the Amazon who can disappear from one spot and reappear in another, all he's done is mastered the art of creating another body to switch to. Science then. Okay. You know the shortest distance between he wants to man. The fest and where he lies. Wow. Well, so clearly, we just had like a technical glitch there. Yeah. <laughs> so I don't know. <laughs> Are we being watched? Well, um, so, yeah, there you are, Peter. <laughs> Give me a sound check. Did I disappear? Well, can you did for just like a brief. Can you hear me? Second. But you're back. Can now. We're back. <laughs> so, are there any um, are there any questions out there for us, Donna? Oh, let's see. Let me do a quick refresh, folks, and this is like your your chance to get in there with your questions. I know I know you guys have questions. I I, I kind of feel like you're afraid to ask them. Just remember, there are no dumb questions, folks. There are only those questions that don't get answered because you don't yeah. ask. I can touch on something that is just, you know, like of paramount importance to to uh, acknowledge and understand, and it's not that difficult. We were just talking about it, you know, on a, um, you know, just broaching the subject with that entity that that you know that Peter created. You know, it isn't. It, it, it's, it's like saying that whether or not you are occupying a glowing sphere or a human form, it's still a body. And so let's, let's say that you go about um, any, any kind of a manifestation work, whether it's law of attraction or, you know, it has done commands or however it is you, you have learned to, to do that kind of thing. It involves visualization and being very clear about what you want and all that kind of stuff. Um, you will get what you want so long as it meshes with what the infinite mind wants for you. And so a lot of times um, when people do the wanting they're, they're doing, it's they're, they're actually wanting in a consciously programmed way. In other words, this, this, the whole system tells most people what to want. And, and when you don't get it, you can bet that it was inappropriate for you to get it because it was somehow or another going to interfere with your with your path, and and so obviously it almost always has to do with money and abundance and all that, and of course there's a way to to be free of that kind of thinking entirely so that you don't even have to to think in those terms anymore. But we don't need to get to that right now. What I was going to say is that. The minute that you have visualized something, you, you have actually created a tremendous volume of energy. And, um, and to make your visualization become objectified in this reality, it takes that much more energy. And, you know, like magnitudes more energy just to, to densify it into this level. But... What's really happening is that your image, your thought, that's why everybody has to be so careful with thought because they are living entities. Mm. And, and um, the minute that you thought that, it, it is out there, it's growing, it is, it is developing itself, it, you know, all that kind of stuff. And um, whatever you want is going to be taken by beings, by people on a higher level and they are going to go about the business of rearranging everything in order to, in a domino effect, have it bleed into your world. So it doesn't happen in a vacuum. It doesn't happen with nameless energy. Um, it's a being, an energetic being doing it. And so whatever you ask for, it's actually a gift if you get it because it takes that much work and that many things to bring it about. Wow. That okay. just made me hungry. <laughs> <laughs> that was pretty powerful. So you know what? There are some more questions. You think so. of a burrito, Peter? <laughs> Do you 
chicken tender. Well, let me ask this question. So in the um, Google chat, in, in Google Plus, I've got, looks like oatmeal, an oatmeal person will know who I'm talking about. She says, hello, Jason and Peter. Great show so far, Jason. When you ran the Blue Emerald, and it kind of gets cut off there. So let me see if I can see if there's any more to that question. Okay. Um, that she's asking. But the other one, let me see if I can't get back there. There it is. Jason, when you, when you ran the Blue Emerald website, you spoke of an experience you called piercing the veil. Can you talk more about this experience and what you learned from it? Thanks, Oatmeal. It was, uh, you know, the, the, the word that I was using was piercing the membrane. And, and I was using that be, exactly for the reason Peter said earlier. It's like, you know, one of the big problems with, with tearing through the membrane and achieving enlightenment is that nobody believes you to begin with. And the reason that they don't believe you is because you don't have the name of an Indian master. And, and so, um, you know, in a strictly, you know, sort of public perception way, there was a, I it was trying to come up with ways to explain what was really going on there because, you know, nobody believed it. Right. And, um, and so all I could do is just, you know, describe an experience. And so it kind of goes like this. Um, there was a book that I became aware of about, I don't know, six years ago, um, maybe a little longer, that was called The Disappearance of the Universe. And I was already, um, pr you know, pretty sophisticated in what I understood uh, about energy and quantum physics and all that kind of stuff. Um, and, you know, I, I really did. I had a better understanding of the mechanics of the universe than anybody I knew. And <coughs> <laughs> you know, sorry. And uh, and I, uh, it's you know, you can be told every day of your life that it's a hallucination, and you can accept that fact uh, because some very uh, trustworthy people are telling you that it's all a hallucination, but it doesn't do you any good. You can know all there is to know about it, but you, you, it doesn't do any good until you experience it. And the experience was um, a, a huge tear through that I had where, where you know, I was actually, um, you know, seeing myself as a digital representation moving through a digital world. Mm. So, if, if you've ever had a lucid dream, you know exactly what it's like. Because if you've, if you've had a lucid dream, you know that, that you could walk right up to hopefully a friend of yours in the dream and say, you know what, I'm asleep in my bed right now. And that person is going to look at you and go, no, you're not. You're standing here talking to me. How do you wake somebody up to that fact? Stephen, Al I'm Alchemy. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's how I did it, and uh, and it is the shortest route there is to it too um, that I know of. Uh, but um, I so I was getting so much information that I went to the Barnes and Noble bookstore and I went to the New Age section and I was going from author to author along the shelf and I was going doesn't get it, doesn't get it, doesn't get it. Oh, not even close. Doesn't get it, and I knew it just by looking at the binding. And then, um, even though I had recommended the disappearance of the universe to people years before, I'd never read it. And then I got to the disappearance of the universe, and I said, "That gets it." And and I knew why, because if you are going to to acknowledge the fact that the Earth um, experiment, um, as it is right now, is for all intents and purposes finished, that it is its own continuum with its own universe. And um, and that's all that's going to happen is that our universe, it's really hard to explain it because it's really only the universe available to Earth perception, right, is actually going to be dismantled. And, and in me getting that download in that minute, 
I I knew that something was happening, and so I actually grabbed the book and ran to the cash register and bought it and ran home as fast as I could. Walked through the door and said, "Okay, bring it." And I tore through into a perceptual level where I could see uh, creation in its entirety is all uh, a hallucination. And so archangels and ascended masters and UFOs and beings, and you know, yeah, there's trillions and trillions of them. They're, they're all just as unreal and as real as, you know, the movie you watch on television. And it was shocking. That was the moment that I found out I wasn't alive. That that we truly are no more alive than what we perceive to be as ghosts. How far down the rabbit hole are we going? <laughs> <laughs> no, that's just the whole thing. And so you know, I, it made me sick. I had to sit down and all that. And uh, and you know, and it was wild because I instantly understood everything. Buddha, Jesus, what all the sayings were in my head. I understood them on the deepest level. It was it was just you know, it was a wild experience. And, and, um, and there's no way you can explain it. That's the whole thing. It's like, uh, you know, if you say to somebody, you know, I'm walking around a lucid dream, and they're going to go, oh, I am too. But, you know, you can, somebody who's been through it, and Peter, you can speak to this, once you've been through to the other side, you can see everybody who is not. Oh. Donna, do you feel like you're being sandwiched right about now? I'm just like, damn, <laughs> that was just like. <laughs> yeah, that, this. That's some fifth dimensional talk. <laughs> <laughs> okay. This, yeah. I was going to say 40 years ago, everybody was dropping acid. <laughs> so, <yeah. laughs> now you just have to listen got to it. <laughs> well, you know, that's that's the experience. Jesus, Buddha, that's the one that they all had. You know, it's just, and it's, it's a, uh, the way it was described by Ra or Salima is it's a, a tear through an impossible tear-through moment where you are in touch with the infinite while being physical. And, uh, you know, it's crazy. It's, you know, it's just crazy to, to, to consider, you know, the implications of it. It's like, for instance, if you're walking, you know, on a busy street, you will step off the curb and get hit by a bus, you know, in another level of reality, your foot's still going to hit the pavement because you didn't get hit by a bus in that one, and you're just going to keep walking, and, and that you is no more aware than uh, of you than you are of it, but it's there. Wow. Okay, I've got one more question. I know we got to wrap this up because Peter actually has another show to jump on, but real quick, because um, this is going to wrap it up between the two of you. I think it's the uh, Bella Jonas. Sorry, Thea, if I'm pronouncing your name wrong. I have yep. Peter's Aquaware and Jason's Alchemies. I wonder how it's going to get better than this. Thank you so much for opening up my world and raising the bar. I was wondering if Jason can answer. Um, can I mix drops of different alchemies in a spray bottle of water and make it my own custom blend? Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's that's what we want to encourage more than anything is for people to use their intuition and make their own concoctions because, you know, there's tons of solar activity. Uh, the current sheet, you know, that is the, um, the giant electrical, electroplasmic current that runs all the way out past Pluto and is being produced by the sun um, is actually the, uh, the plume serpent of, you know, and, and the, the sun dragon, you know, the like the Maya. Can you, can you, I'm sorry. Can you can you do that one more time? They, well, you know, <laughs> they, you know, you know how the Maya, um, they they called it the plume serpent. What they were seeing is that the the magnetic equator of the sun is a serpent-like pattern, and it projects it all the way through the solar system. And Earth dips into out the bottom and then back up through its undulations, right? And so a lot of everything that goes on on Earth is regulated by the sun, everything, period, uh, even women's fertility cycles. And so um, the, uh, getting to know the alchemy and using your intuition is you yourself optimizing how you're using that electroplasmic current sheet the sun is producing. Oh, okay. You know what? I'm sorry. These questions keep coming. 
I, I, I want to um, say Jason or Tony Davis is saying hi to you both. Um, hey. Hey, Tony. Jason is St. Germain Channel, the student. Uh, now y'all want to bring these questions. Can you say that one more time? Yeah. Let me let me refresh and bring it up. Okay. Okay, again, from um, Troy Davis. Hi, Peter and Jason. Did, Jace, did Jason or Jason, did St. Germain channel the student and the guru through you? Great stuff. Oh, that's old school, man. Yeah, that's... <laughs> I mean, you know, it's brilliant stuff for uh, for those who are ready for it. Um, the, there's no question about it. It's it's some very good um, understanding, but um, you know, it's it, it, that's a bizarre question because there is more ambiguity to what Saint G is than people get, and so I think that Saint G. Careful. You're on sacred ground. I know, and so I'm, I'm thinking that the best way to put that is that that Saint G was largely involved with the management of how the information came through. Your entire screen is turning purple, man, from the door through you all, and this is physical. That it just went away. Did you see that, Donna? There, no, now it's back. Questions. What did I miss? No. It, 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 look at the purple. Yeah, you're through his screen right now. I see that. I that's do see that on the edge. I wonder that if that's going to translate. That means he's, uh, that's his essence coming right now. I can, I can feel him right here. Right? Can you see it? I mean, it's physical. Can you see it, Donna? Yeah, I, I see it. Purple, but you know that that's the the essence of Saint G, sort of uh, entering the space. I think I saw him in the form of a bird. It's gone. Yeah, there it goes. <laughs> um, anyway, a lot of teachers involved in that, and it was wild how um, what happened is I would get a sensation in my body, and I would tune into that sensation, and it was like opening a package, and that package would turn into experiential information that I could then, you know, do my best to get into words. And then uh, because it was, you know, it was some pretty, you know, out there stuff for me at the time, even though uh, all of that is, is taught in, you know, the basic levels of the mysteries. Um, Peter and I would talk about it, and we'd get a lot of confirmation and clarity, for instance, on, you know, the fine points of this or that, because, we'd, because we're actually not working with just St. G, but an entire council. And St. G, um, that concept of what St. G is would, would show up basically as a hired hand as far as I know. Because I don't think, he never really sat on that council, did he, Peter? No. Yeah. Not like Dennis the Menace. <laughs> <laughs> so. Okay. I, 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 you know what? This is way in, intense and of course, we knew that when we brought Jason on the show tonight that an hour and a half was never going to cut it. We, we have to bring him back. Um, Peter is actually getting ready to jump on another call. It's the Kelly D. Stephen, or the C Stephen D. Kelly show. He's got to um, get ready for that. I got to get him over there, folks. So uh, I'm, I'm in awe. Hey, this um, is... This Peter guy is getting hot, isn't he? Peter is hot. He's hot. He's all over the place. He's but, all over but the place. You remember a story once upon a time where the direction <laughs> all this was going, don't you? You remember those talks we had? Oh, yeah. Well, it's all happening. Right I on. I know. I know. So, so you're, for, you're, you're the white man, you know. You know that, right? The what? The wide net. The What's wide that? net. The white yeah, net. The the wide net. You're the one that, that throws the huge wide net out there and gathers people together, and then the ones that are ready to you know to you know move on into the super beings and stuff like that. You're the one that's uh, basically bringing them. Well, let's do it. Yes, I'm, cause I'm we, we have to. You got to bring it back because Ron has a question. Um, yeah, he's got his next product is um, Helios Alchemy. 
So that's Ron. Ron is chatting with us as well. Okay. Guys, do you want to do a, a, a activation or do we just need to cut it and go? I think um, we need to cut it and go, but I will make some passing words. Jason makes products of the highest purity, so you can go out there and spend money on you know, any of the other 400 websites that claim to do anything, but you know, you see where I am 11 years later, and this stuff was created, uh, you know, 11 years ago at a, at a at the time a very high level. And where he's going today with the super beings is is way beyond, you know, anything that we ever conceived of back then. So, um, you know, he's the real deal. Yeah. Thank you very much. No Absolutely. Problem. And real quick, it is the superbeings.net. That's where you can go see Jason's products. Go there now, folks, after we wrap up. Check out his products. Um, I'm looking forward to getting mine. I'll, I'll report back. And um, definitely, of course, go to the modern day mystic.com. Great products there as well with the aquaware and the entire product line. It's, this is good stuff. All right, folks, let's say good night. Thank you, man. Well, good you're you going to be back in a big way soon. <laughs> yeah, we'll get, we'll get Jason back here real soon. Oh, real quick before we go, folks, just so you know, check with us next um, Sunday. Check in with us on the show. We've got an amazing, another amazing guest, Shandini oh, is going to be with us. Shandini Laray. Shandini Laray, uh, Dr. Omoto's partner for many years is now using um, Aquaware with mind-blowing results. So uh, next Sunday is going to be a very, very interesting call. Yeah, there was one one tidbit I forgot to mention, by the way, and then I'm, and then I'm done. Uh, when you were talking about Lawrence Gardner, uh, he was using uh, my product. Yeah. Yeah. And that was 11 <laughs> years ago. <laughs> awesome. Good stuff. Good stuff. All right, good nice. Guys, good night. We got to go. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. Watch the replay. Uh, good night. Hasta la vista, baby. <laughs> Watch the replay. You're going to be blown away. Talk to you later. Good night, everyone. Good night.